Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today is part four in our User's Guide to Mental Health series. And as I've done in each of the four parts, just want to qualify this with a disclaimer. I am not a medical professional or a mental health professional. I am a mentally healthy human who spent decades of his life convinced that he was struggling with various mental illnesses. And so what I share, I share from a place of these are things that made a profound difference to my experience. And when I've shared them with other people, it often seems to make a profound experience to theirs. And that is the spirit in which I offer them. Now, if you want to learn more, we have a free basic course in living from the inside out at michaelneal.org forward slash basic course. And the book I've been recommending throughout this series is a wonderful book written by my mentor uh, called It's That Simple. A User's Manual for Human Beings by Mavis Karn. What I want to talk about today is two aspects of my mental health journey that I've noticed when I share them with people. They go, oh, me too. And, and so I want to share them with you. And the first was one of the most profound insights that I had early on in into my own sort of experience of mental health was I, I went to a place in the Berkshire Mountains of Massachusetts called the Option Institute. And they were doing a course. Uh, I'd seen them on television. I was living in the UK, and there was a TV show where they showed some of the work they did with autistic kids. And I was kind of blown away. And I, I literally, they had a course starting, I think it was three days or five days later, and I, I had to go. I got on a plane. I flew from London. I went out. And I thought that I was going to be learning how to be happy, how to, how to challenge my unhappy thoughts and unhappy beliefs and make myself happy. What I actually saw, and it was game-changing for me, was that it's okay to be unhappy. I didn't know that. I thought feeling unhappy meant there was something wrong with me. I thought feeling unhappy meant I was going to get unhappier and unhappier and unhappier as time went on. I thought feeling unhappy, and by unhappy, we, we, what does that mean? Feeling sad, feeling insecure, feeling scared, feeling angry, feeling upset, feeling like I couldn't cope. I thought that meant that there was something fundamentally wrong. I didn't realize that it just meant that in that particular moment, I was focusing on some pretty unhappy thinking. And that when the thinking passed, I'd, I'd still be there. When the bus with that thinking on it left, if I wasn't on the bus, I'd still be at the bus stop where everything's okay. But if I did happen to get on the bus, it was okay to let me off at the next stop. And, and that liberated me because I had no idea how much of my life was designed around mitigating and preventing unhappiness. I hadn't yet seen, like I talked about in, in part three of this series, that there's no such thing as a solution to a feeling. It's just a feeling. You feel it and then it changes. And that, that bought me a lot of time. <laughs> it really did. It gave me so much headspace. Because not only were all my unhappy thoughts taking up my head, but all the things I thought I had to do to stop myself from having unhappy thoughts and feelings were filling up my head, taking up my bandwidth, keeping me incredibly busy-minded to the point where I rarely noticed the mental health underneath the roller coaster of thought and feeling. Now, the flip of that also turns out to be true. It's not only okay to be unhappy, it's okay to be happy. Now, you might be going, yeah, of course it's okay to be happy. That's silly. Or you may be going, it is. But if I'm happy when the world is the way that it is, doesn't that mean there's something wrong with me? If, if I'm happy when my partner's not happy, when my parents aren't happy, when my 
kids aren't happy, doesn't that mean there's something wrong with me? Doesn't that mean there's a chip missing? If I'm happy, but the world isn't perfect, if I'm happy, but I don't have my dream job, if I'm happy, but I'm not with my dream partner, doesn't that mean there's something wrong with me? And so we come back full circle to the very first assumption that everybody seems to make about mental health, which is that they don't have it, that the fact that they don't feel it means there's something wrong with them. But then that also brings us back to the very first insight I shared, which is you've always been innately mentally healthy. You were born happy. Babies don't need therapy. We learn to use our mind over time, not on purpose, but inadvertently we pick up really unhelpful and sometimes unhealthy habits of thought, ways of using the mind, of keeping ourselves continually busy-minded, and then numbing all the uncomfortable feelings that come up when we're busy-minded. And it leads to a host of challenges and problems, and it can even lead to changes in, in the, the, the chemical structure of our brain. There was one point when I was in the midst of this when I got a, a neurotransmitter test, and my, my levels of serotonin, the feel-good chemical, were so low that the, the, the doctor said, yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of amazing you're not dead. <laughs> and I was like, great. And, and, and yet, what changed for me was not a chemical intervention. What changed for me was that I started to see all of my experience of what I thought was mental illness, mental unwellness, as being a product of my own un unknown, innocent misuse of the gift of thought. And when I found that space before thought, that stillness out of which thoughts arise, what I've been calling the bus stop throughout this series, I realized that I could still have unhealthy thoughts, unhelpful thoughts from time to time, but they didn't mean anything about me. They didn't mean there was anything wrong with me. And in and of itself, that changed everything. So the two very simple things I, I want you to take forward from today. If you're unhappy, it's okay to be unhappy. And if you're happy, it's okay to be happy. Have fun, learn heaps, happy exploring, and I'll talk with you soon. 